burned my wounds, proudly fighting in a war I did not support on the orders of a president I did not vote for, because I believed in, and I still do believe in, the values of our nation, because I believe in a government of, by, and for the people, where voters, voters choose who leads them, not the other way around. I have spent my entire adult life defending our democracy, but I never, never thought it would be necessary to defend it from an attempted violent overthrow in our nation's own Capitol building. Well, I refuse to let anyone intent on instigating chaos or inciting violence deter me from carrying out my constitutional duties. You know, when my bu Army buddies and I raised our right hands, when the 45,000 troops in Arizona raised their right hands and swore to protect and defend the Constitution, we did not qualify our oath by saying that we'd follow orders only when the Commander-in-Chief was someone whose election we were happy with. Just like when every senator in this chamber was sworn into office, we didn't mutter under our breath that we discharge our duties only when it served our political interests or helped us to avoid the wrath of a petty, insecure, wannabe, tin-pot dictator on the precipice of losing power and relevance. No, there is no ambiguity here. Joe Biden won the election with a record number of votes. Republican officials nationwide confirmed those results, including in Arizona, as has judge after Trump appointed judge. Even Trump's attorney general admitted that the United States Department of Justice had not found widespread fraud that would have affected the outcome. Yet still, many of my Republican colleagues are asking us to ignore all of that. With no evidence of their own, they're asking us to ignore court rulings, ignore Republican election officials, and even worse, ignore the will of the people across this vast, great nation. By trying to overturn this election, they are placing more trust in Reddit conspiracy theories over the Constitution, proving that appeasing Trump is more important to them than protecting the most basic tenet of our republic, the adherence to free and fair elections. If there's one thing I know, it's that my troops didn't sign up to defend our democracy in war zones thousands of miles away, only to watch it crumble in these hallowed halls here at home. Yet that is what this effort amounts to, an attempt to subvert our democracy, and in the process, it is threatening what makes America American. Because in this country, in this country, the power of the people has always mattered more than the people in power. That is the ideal that this nation was founded upon. That is why a few patriots threw some tea in Boston Harbor, why Washington crossed the Delaware, why suffragists were arrested a century ago, and why my friend John Lewis crossed that bridge in Selma in 1965. It is why millions spent a Tuesday in November standing in line, braving a pandemic to make their voices heard. Listen, this administration has always had an advers adversarial relationship with the truth. Trump always cries conspiracy, always foments chaos whenever something doesn't go his way. But today, we here in this chamber have the opportunity to prove that here, in this country, truth matters, that right matters, that the will of the people matters more than the whims of any single powerful individual. I have no tea to throw in Boston Harbor tonight, and I regret that I have no rucksack to pack for my country, no Black Hawk to pilot, nor am I asking for any grand gesture for my Republican colleagues. All that I'm asking of you is to reflect on the oaths that you have sworn, on the damage done to our union today, and on the sacrifices made by those who've given so much to this nation. 
from the service members at Fort Huachuca and Marine Corps Air Station Yuma to the marchers who bent America's moral arc a bit more towards justice with every single step that they took, every bridge that they crossed. Then ask yourself whether the democracy they were willing to bleed for, the country that each of us in this chamber has sworn to defend, is worth damaging in order to protect the porcelain ego of a man who treats the Constitution as if it were little more than a yellowing piece of paper. I think we all know the right answer.